Bruchem Aboim, again in our series of my thoughts. Um, we've talked about God, we've talked about um, why be religious. And then really I think the essence of it all is uh, happiness. And um, what does happiness have to do with being religious? And the truth of the matter is it has everything to do with being religious. A person who's not happy isn't religious. Um, the Baal Shem Tov has taught us that more than the side of evil, the Yetzirah wants you to sin, he just wants you to be unhappy. Because if you're unhappy, sinning is automatic. Uh, you just give up. And then nothing makes, it makes any difference. And generally it's straight downhill. Um, the Excuse me. The um, there's a pasuk in the Torah. There's a verse after the admonitions, the curses, where God warns us about if we're not good, what He'll do, and it's pretty horrific. And then the reasons given why God punishes us. It's an interesting reason. Um, you'd think it would say that we don't follow His ways, we don't serve Him properly any number of reasons. But the reason given is says, The reason why God punishes us because we don't serve him, the Lord your God with joy and goodness of heart for all that he gives us. That's it. Gratitude for not appreciating that which God does. It's amazing. There, you know, I had a friend who had a, a three-year-old son. And one night, he woke up in the middle of the night, this friend of mine, with just some noises. And uh, got out of bed to check what the noises were. And as he was walking through his house, he passed his son's playroom. And he passed the door, and then he moved back, and he stopped, and he looked, and there was his three-year-old son sitting on a rocking chair rocking horse, bouncing up and down, singing at the top of his lungs, and under his arm was a half gallon of ice cream. And he was scooping the ice cream into his mouth and bouncing up and down and singing at the same time. And my friend turned to me and he said, I know I should have punished him, but I was so bad busy laughing that all I could tell him to do was go to sleep. And I kind of think that's how God sees us. As long as we're on the rocking horse and we're bouncing up and down and putting the ice cream in our mouth and we're, we're happy with the world and things are good and we see things in a positive way, why is he going to punish us? Just get it together. You know, there were two kings in Jewish history. One very famous, David Amal, King David, everybody knows about. Another one, king of Israel, whose name was Achav, married to a famous woman, Ezebel, Jezebel who was an evil person, but a world conqueror. And when David and Melch's troops went to battle, he lost men. People died. When Achav's troops went to battle, no one died. He was an evil king. But in Achav's kingdom, people got along. There was shalom. There was peace between them. People were happy. And it makes all the difference in the world. And this becomes the key. For ivdu es Hashem basimcha, to serve God with joy, as it says in Psalm 100. That's the essence of who we are. Because if we serve God with joy, then what we're saying is that we acknowledge the fact we're ambassadors of God. And we're saying that God is good. That God is treating us well. That we're happy with our portion. It's interesting, there's a uh, question. Eze Huasher in Pirkei Avos, the Ethics of the Father, who's a rich man? So it says, Sameach Bechelko, one who's happy with what he has. Simple answer. But it's actually a bullseye precise answer. It's not so simple. See, because Sameach Bechelko in Hebrew is present tense. So if I give you $100,000, before I gave it to you, maybe you weren't happy. After I give it to you, you want more. But when I give it to you at that moment, that precise moment, you are thrilled. That's a meach being in the moment, being in the present. 
There's a little poem that says the past is history, the future is a mystery, and all we have is the present, and that's why it's called the present. We're so busy worrying about the past and thinking about the future that we forget to live in the present. And when we do, life more often than not becomes pretty good. You know, it says, Everything's in the hands of heaven, except for the fear of heaven. And I really think that there's another thing that's in our hands, not in the hands of heaven. And that is whether we're happy or not. I think that it's a conscious choice. I kind of compare it to a sailboat and a powerboat. A sailboat, when the sails are up, it waits for the wind to blow. When the wind blows, it moves. If the wind doesn't blow, it stands where it's at. If storms come, it has to deal with them. A power boat, on the other hand, you get in, you turn the key, you go wherever you want. If there's a storm, you try to outrun it. And you may well do it. And if you can't, well, then you have to deal with it every so often. And so, too, with happiness. Happiness is a conscious choice. Do you want to be happy or not? Many times, truth of the matter, people revel in misery. For what? It takes as much effort to be happy or maybe less than it does to be miserable. And when a person makes that conscious choice, doesn't wait for the wind to blow, but puts the key in and goes, and makes up his mind, I'm going to be happy, I'm going to see things. Life is not reality. Life is perception. It's what you perceive it to be. The same thing can happen to two people. One's smiling and the other one's miserable. A friend of mine's unhappy. He buys a lottery ticket. He didn't win. <laughs> he didn't win. So he didn't win. How many people are going to win? He's angry that God doesn't let him win. He's actually angry at God about it. Well, you don't have a chance of being happy if you're going to get angry about losing a lottery ticket. You know, there's a, uh, if you look at a heart monitor, it, it has, it goes up and down, peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys. As long as there's peaks and valleys, you're healthy. When it goes straight across, you're in big trouble. It means you're dead. But without the valleys, there are no peaks. So the way that we're wired, the what makes us understand what joy in life is, the fact that not everything works exactly the way we want. So that when it does, we appreciate it. Otherwise, we get used to it. Story told of a man who was in the middle of a holdup. And he gets shot. And the next thing he knows, he wakes up and with a startle. Because he remembers getting shot. And he feels his body and there's no bullet holes. He seems to be quite okay. So the next thing he does, he looks around his surroundings. And he realizes he's in a room and there's no doors and there's no window. Nothing. Just a room. Four walls. And all of a sudden, a door appears and an old man in a long white beard walks in. And as you can imagine, his first question is, where am I? And the old man says, it's not important. What can I do for you? And he says, well, I'm a little hungry. Maybe you got some broads around. A little bit of gambling. A little action. And the old man says, no problem and sets him up and he has a great night. Wakes up the next morning in the same room. Looks around. No door, no windows. All of a sudden the door appears, the old man comes in. Where am I? The old man says, it's not important. What can I do for you? Well, maybe you got a bank around I can hold up. Some broads, some booze, some gambling. The, the, the robbery goes perfect. The women are gorgeous. The food is terrific. Everything about the night is magnificent. The next morning he wakes up again in the same room. And again, the same scenario happens over and over again. And each time he asks the old man where he is. Finally, the old man walks in one day. And the man doesn't ask him. The thief doesn't ask him anymore where he is. And he looks at the old man. He says, I know where I am. And the old man says, where? He says, I'm in hell. And he said, right. Because just like the snake in the garden, God gave him the dirt of the earth to eat. He gave him what to take care of forever. God wanted nothing to do with him, and dirt has no taste. If everything is the same, it has no taste. It loses its joy. 
So when we complain about, really gives us a chance to earn, to, to earn that thing that we do to become happy. We are ambassadors of God. Religious people, we don't have to go around telling people to put on tefillin and to light Shabbos candles and to pray and all the rest of it. Just smile. Just smile. Imagine if you went into one of these religious sections in Israel, and they barak me, assure him, and everyone there just smiled and said, good morning, how you doing? Big smile. You went, what, crazy? What's he smiling about? And the answer is, what he's smiling about is he's connected to God, because he's an ambassador of God. And if you're an ambassador of God, as it says in, in the, one of the, the verses of the Shemona Esrei, that it says, v'hosim imenu yogon v'anocha and remove from me all complaining. Why? Because who's, who, who's reigning over me? You yourself, God. If you're connected to God, why wouldn't you be happy? The servant of a king is a king. No one can touch you. So if you really believe what you're asking God to do is take complaining away and see things in a positive light. Perception, not reality. Because reality doesn't exist. If you think you're happy, you're happy. Beautiful women need to be told they're beautiful. But why? Don't they look in the mirror? And the answer is yes, they do. But what do they see? They have a flaw. And all they see is the flaw. What do we see? The whole picture. It's beautiful. All they see is the flaw. Perception. So to them, they think everybody that looks at them is looking at that flaw. When all they're looking at is the whole picture. And that's why when you judge someone, we say, have a done is kala adam lakavskos. Judge the whole person. And the word to call all is extra. You just say judge a person for good. No, judge the whole person. Don't take out one facet of his personality and look at it. Yeah, you can find criticism with anyone. Put the whole thing together as one package. Looks great. And that becomes the key. The idea of, it's interesting, be a hypocrite. You're not happy. Act happy. Walk around and think positive. And things will be. Think good, it'll be good. And when you take a positive attitude toward life, the truth of the matter is you have chosen to be happy. No one has to give it to you. And it's not a matter of being rich. It's been proven. People win lotteries are not happy. Money has never made anyone happy. What money does is you've got something to watch. There was a story told of a king who had a disease that was going to kill him. And they tried every cure. And his stargazer said, we found the one thing that will save you if you can take the shirt off the back of a man who is truly happy and grind it up and drink from that mixture. That will save your life. So as you can imagine, he sent his messengers all over his kingdom to find the happiest man in the kingdom. Where they go, the richest man. Are you happy? Yeah, of course I'm happy. I'm really happy. Well, this bothers me. The next richest man, they, went, they couldn't find anyone that was truly happy. And as they're quandering, trying to figure out what to do, they see a guy coming down the street whistling. See, he's pretty happy. And they come up to him and say, excuse me, sir, are you really happy? He says, yes. I mean, completely 100% happy. He says, I'm 100% happy. Not a care in the world. They said, great. The king needs your shirt. He says, I'm sorry, I can't give it to you. It's not my shirt. That's why I'm so happy. When you have stuff, you have stuff to watch. You have things to take care of. You have responsibilities to it. If a person can travel light and give God all of this burden to carry and just take care of things. You know, I'm, I'm petrified of heights, but I'm an avid skier. And I couldn't figure out how I would start skiing. I didn't start until I was 35. But what I learned about skiing was a lesson for life. I only ski three feet in front of me. It's all flat. Three feet in front of me. I never looked down the mountain. Because if I do, I will stop moving. I will just be petrified. But if I only look three feet in front of me, it's all doable. I don't get too far ahead. Happiness is a choice. Happiness is not what is happening around you. It's what's happening inside of you. And God wants you to be happy. And when you are happy, what you acknowledge is that there's a God in the world and he's treating you right. And what you become is a Kiddush Hashem, a sanctification of God's name. And people want to know why you're happy. And then you become an influence. You make other people happy, like one candle that lights another. God should give us strength that we can understand this. And share this with other people. To make the whole world happy by making other people happy, you'll make yourself even happier. God bless and thank you for coming.